There are so many activities people do to improve their health, optimize their lifestyle, biohacking, and as much as I hate that term, you know, most of it works to some degree. But if you don't have the simple stuff down, the rest doesn't matter. And even someone like myself who's been involved in researching and practicing a healthy lifestyle since I was a teenager, I still have a difficult time with those basics, that simple stuff. It's important to understand that you shouldn't worry about fine tuning and critiquing things if you can't even fall asleep. And there's quite a few examples of stuff like this, each to varying degrees of effectiveness. Hot cold therapy such as cryotherapy, ice baths, saunas, hot yoga is actually something very beneficial if you can fit it in here and there. Other things such as blue light blocking glasses, red lamps, blood flow restriction bands are menial solutions to overarching issues. Reduce the Wi-Fi and EMF. Don't put on some stupid orange glasses. You know, forget that red light. Go get some sun. And don't strap yourself up BDSM style. Figure out a proper workout routine. So I've come up with six categories in order of importance. Diet, water, Wi-Fi EMF, sleep, grounding, and exercise. Many things we do for health can be lumped into one of these categories. However, they usually don't accomplish the main goal. And although these are ranked in an order, all of them must be addressed to feel your best. The degree to which you address certain things may not be necessary, but there is a minimum for each one. You, know, you don't have to go super crazy, optimize 100%. You just need to get enough of each category correct to become healthy. And this is kind of what I go over in consultations with people. We address personal lifestyle factors and try to get everything to a baseline. What differentiates one person to another is how we can achieve each of these categories based on subjective living situations, budget, whatever it may be. And that can be surprisingly difficult. So you, know, you guys can check out my book. The Ancestral Indigenous Diet. I have an audio book on that as well. You can even go to frankdastafano.com where you can schedule a personalized consultation. Number one is diet and obviously the main focus of my YouTube channel. Optimizing and perfecting diet takes years and years and years of nutritional research, understanding, and I'm still learning every day. How to figure out to balance vitamins, minerals, fatty acids. That being said, it's more important to remove the negatives from your diet as opposed to adding the positives. People get really held up with, oh, this food's nutrient dense, that food's so good for you. Yeah, but are you poisoning yourself with too much of something? You know, don't worry about being super strict, dieting like a madman, restricting calories. Just buy your food organic, high quality, and buy local. I don't necessarily mean local as in close to you, although you might find some good stuff. I mean that you know, local quality tends to be grown naturally and very fresh. And not only do you want your food to be as high quality as possible and remove those negative components like agrochemicals, herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, insecticides, you want to focus at least 60 to 70% of your calories from meat, from animal products, to get in those nutrients that most people are deficient in from a standard American diet. In addition, it's fairly easy to start with that baseline and figure out what you're missing by addressing each nutrient on an individual basis. The carnivore diet kind of does this, except it's not really balanced from a vitamin or mineral perspective. The carnivore diet does, however, give you a clean enough slate to figure out what you need to fix. On paper, you know, carnivore with potatoes or even pasta would actually be far more balanced. Basically, mostly meat with some unprocessed carbohydrates is a great start. You know, don't start sucking down shellfish, oysters, all these organ meats without knowing, you know, is there a pollution concern? Am I imbalancing my nutrients? Number two is water. And I've done many, many dietary videos on my channel. I've also done at least half a dozen on water. And that principle of removing the negatives applies here. You know, avoid the pollutants. Don't worry about how many minerals are in your water if you're sucking down fluoride and chlorine. I'm assuming that 
most nutrition channels don't really talk about water that much unless they're selling some electrolytes because you know with a lot of this health stuff there isn't money to be made you know including water and some of the next few topics i'm going to mention and you know, i'm sure if ups ground shipping water to everyone was affordable they would find a way to make money on it some of you may be lucky enough to live on a property that has a natural well or spring you know some of those really beautiful farms i saw in pennsylvania last week i was very jealous if not then a reasonably affordable option is to install filtration on your home both distillation and reverse osmosis even then the only real safe best bet is to get water from that well or spring yourself by traveling to it or perhaps buying some glass bottled spring water uh, like you guys see me drinking all the time number three is wi-fi and emf reduction and as you guys can see there's a theme here we're reducing the negatives as opposed to the positives this is definitely the least talked about topic because there's so much money in keeping people connected to their phones and media 24 7. it's becoming the norm for teenagers to stare at their cell phones until three or four in the morning very basic here just turn everything off at night router phones electronic devices once you get your body recovering overnight from this radiation you'll feel a world of a difference i mean going out and camping for a day or two and then coming back into the city and putting a phone next to your head that'll help you understand the difference further steps can be taken to hardwire all your devices even your phone in some scenarios where the person is living in an apartment or has no control of their surroundings further measures can be taken to shield themselves and the room but you know that requires several hundred dollars in investment and a little bit of know-how to block the frequencies that are in our modern environments i did a video over a year ago on how to do this maybe i'll do an update video and this type of radiation causes many health issues whether it's eczema psoriasis ibs it's really endless usually a combination of high wi-fi environments and a fairly poor diet triggers the problem and then regardless of what the person does in their lifestyle until they reduce the wi-fi they can't fix the issue uh, this is another thing I, I help people with and i direct them in how to deal with those tricky and unique scenarios number four we have sleep although i would rank this higher than everything else the reason you're not sleeping might be because you're in a super high wi-fi environment it might be because you're allergic to something in your diet so these few factors might need to be correct before you start sleeping properly and there's no rule to the amount just make sure that these factors are correct then sleep as much as your body naturally desires ideally lined up with circadian rhythm and you, know, you go to bed when it gets dark you wake up when the sun comes up i know that is incredibly difficult and unrealistic for most people but you want to be somewhat in line with it by you know reducing your light exposure at night and maybe even blackening your room with curtains or whatever just so you don't wake up earlier than your body needs to and you might want to take other aspects of your lifestyle off to add to sleep you know so if you're bodybuilding and you need to get in seven meals a day maybe do five meals and get some more sleep if you're a workaholic or you like exercising five hours a day add more to sleep after you fix these other factors and you'll feel better number five is grounding and if you don't know what grounding is it's simply being in contact with the physical earth the earth has electrons that act as antioxidants when we are in touch with it. So by wearing rubber soled shoes, being in a building on the second floor of my house right now, you're essentially causing damage and oxidative stress to yourself. And this is difficult because even in a city, suburban areas, the Wi-Fi and the EMF can disrupt the natural frequencies in the ground which makes grounding actually harmful you know i've tried grounding to the copper pipes in my house as well as you know attaching a grounding rod uh, outside and then connecting myself with the wire but there's so many unnatural non-native wi-fi fields that you can't ground and i have a video on this if you guys are interested in learning about this further but there's two basic solutions one you can go hiking barefoot or with like earthing shoes or leather-soled shoes that's why the native americans wore moccasins 
Two, if you're not in a high frequency town or city, you know, you can ground yourself using certain devices that are available online and maybe even going to a park is pretty good. But here, you're in New York City, not so lucky. One little thing I've noticed is the few times where I went out to a farm or I went out to the beach and I came home, I slept a lot better than usual. So don't overlook any of these things I'm suggesting to you guys. There's a reason they're on this list. You know, there's a reason I've been researching health and nutrition for 10 years and this is what I come up with for a 10, 15 minute video. Uh, so for number six, exercise. And there's many facets to this. Uh, some main ones being an increase in muscle, lean body mass, increased antioxidant activity from said exercise, as well as improved gut motility. Having more muscle means you burn more calories, you're less prone to injury, there's much less weight on your joints, your tendons, your ligaments when you move around. The antioxidant activity from exercise really helps prevent a lot of modern lifestyle factors and pollutants that we should be removing as much as possible anyway, but there is a small amount that can't really be removed. That's where exercise kind of helps even that out. Gut motility, very important for preventing dysbiosis, SIBO, CIFO, candida overgrowth, bacteria imbalances, and long-term stomach issues. This ties in a lot with preventing gut issues from high Wi-Fi environments, because what happens is the Wi-Fi causes so much oxidative stress that your intestines and your digestive system start dysfunctioning and not absorbing nutrients, but your gut bacteria and the fungus is relatively unaffected by the radiation and they're having a party. And when you combine that with no exercise and the food's just sitting there, that's where you have the health issues. That's why so many people are having problems with these new devices, poor diet, lack of exercise, and, and missing all these other factors as well. So it's pretty easy to see how if you miss a couple of these that the others go haywire but as we said in order of importance you know you know if you don't ground it is very very helpful and i think it's necessary but again it's not the end of the world whereas you know if you're poisoning yourself in your diet and whatever you're drinking whole different story uh, so thank you guys for joining me today hopefully this helps some of you that might have been overlooking certain aspects of your lifestyle I mentioned several things that you guys can check out earlier. Just go to frank-defano.com if you'd like to learn more. Thanks again for joining me today, guys. Let me know what educational videos you guys would like to see, and I will see you for tomorrow's video if I don't lose my mind. Or at least go crazier enough to not make a video.